feels like we should start off with the horrific mm. terror attack that we saw in Manchester. 22 people dead, including a young Scottish schoolgirl. Do you think Jeremy Corbyn was right to link it to UK foreign policy in places like Libya and Iraq? Look, well, firstly, all of our thoughts remain with the, the victims of the Manchester attack. It was absolutely horrific and atrocious. And after the dreadful week we've had, it's actually lovely to be sitting here with the sound of children <laughs> playing behind us. You know, let me say two things about the Jeremy Corbyn speech. Firstly, nobody, and I don't believe Jeremy Corbyn was saying that there is anybody other than the terrorists to blame for acts of terrorism. You know, terrorists will always look for reasons to justify their actions, but there is no justification, there's no excuse, there's nobody else to blame. The person responsible for the attack in Manchester was the man who blew himself and, unfortunately, others up on Monday night. But the second point I would make is that I think we must be free, particularly in a general election campaign, to have honest debates about foreign policy and to have honest debates about security and how we keep the population of the country safe. And I think we should be able to do that without anybody suggesting that anybody that criticises UK foreign policy, and I've got many criticisms of UK foreign policy, is in any way, shape or form trying to justify the horrific and dreadful actions of terrorists. So, so with that in mind, do you agree then that there are links between what's happened well, in the past with UK foreign policy uh, and terrorist well, attacks that we're seeing now? Let me repeat, it's not an excuse, it's not a justification, but you know, I remember uh, when the former head of MI5 uh, herself said that the war in Iraq had led to greater radicalisation in the UK and had raised different issues uh, about uh, different threats and, and different issues in terms of keeping the country safe. So I think in any healthy democracy, and remember terrorists are trying to undermine our democracy, we've got to protect our ability in a healthy democracy to have these debates. I've been a long critic of the war in Iraq. I don't think it helped the situation in Iraq and it had implications at home. I've been a critic of the air campaign in Syria, not because I question the motivations of people wanting to find a solution in Syria, but I question the efficacy of a campaign from the air. We must be able to have those debates. So you agree with Jeremy Corbyn then that it's made us less safe I, and it's made terrorist attacks more likely? Well, I, I think there are issues about foreign policy and the implications and the uh, implications for radicalisation here, but where I, I would disagree with anybody, and to be, you know, I'm, I'm not here to advocate for Jeremy Corbyn, but where I think it is probably slightly unfair is to say that he was some somehow saying that that meant, I mean, I heard Theresa May saying that what Jeremy Corbyn was saying, that we only had ourselves to blame for what happened in Manchester. I don't think that's what he was saying. I don't think it is what any right-thinking person would say. But we must have the ability to have honest debates about foreign policy and security here. And that would include, you know, the, the, the reductions to police cover that we've seen, not here in Scotland, but in, in England. You know, if, if we want to keep the population safe, which we all do, then we must be able well, to debate the factors There have been that. reductions in police in Scotland as well, haven't there? The no. force apparently is facing a funding black hole, hole of £188 We've, million pounds we, by 2021. We, we our police face pressures, our police face funding pressures, as public services do, but uh, my government came to uh, office in 2007 under Alex Salmond at the time. We made a commitment to maintain police officer numbers at a thousand above the level we inherited, and we have kept that pledge. You've seen a reduction of 20,000 officers in England. Uh, officer numbers in Scotland have not declined. We've also invested in uh, making sure that there are uh, sufficient trained uh, armed officers. So that's why, you know, this week our chief constable was able to provide the level of cover he thought appropriate without calling on assistance from the military. Now, none of that is to in any way try to politicise the events of this week. Nobody should try to do that. The, the fundamental point I'm making here is that if we are to tackle terrorism, keep the population safe, then in a healthy democracy, particularly in an election campaign, none of these issues can be off limits. I think it would suit the Tories for some of these issues to be off limits, but that wouldn't serve any of the people that we uh, have an obligation to be honest with during this campaign. There's just one more thing I was interested to get your thoughts on before we move on to other things other than Manchester. Do you think that misogyny was partly responsible for this attack? Because it did seem to be a, a targeted towards young girls going to a um, pop concert where the singer is perhaps mm -hmm. known for her provocative outfit. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you look at uh, Ariana Grande's uh, fan base, then you find it is mainly young girls. My 11-year-old niece is a big fan of Ariana, Ariana Grande, uh, but also gay men. Um, and therefore, I think the attack on that concert was a fairly fundamental attack 
on the values of a, a liberal society that many of us hold so dear. And that, you know, horrifies me, it horrifies all of us, you know. Any terrorist attack is, is horrific beyond words, but one that is targeted on children and young people just goes even beyond what uh, has been the case in the past. But it makes it all the more important that we don't allow the terrorists to prevail. So, you know, that's why it's so lovely to hear the sound of children playing behind us here today, as I said earlier on. Childhood should be a time of happiness and joy. There'll be many children across the UK right now who are worried about going to concerts, and we must work really hard to make sure that the things that are so special about childhood are not allowed to be harmed by what happened in Manchester this week. Let's talk about the campaign, shall we? Because one of the most difficult moments for you happened this week when a nurse mm. took you to task uh, for having to rely mm. on food parcels because of the pay freeze imposed mm -hmm. by your government. And she's not alone, is she? Do you mm -hmm. know how many food parcels were delivered to Scotland last year? Uh, food, food bank usage, not just from people working in the public sector, but generally is far too high. The pay freeze, and let me come on to that directly, because it is uh, an issue that's very uppermost in, in my mind just now. It's a UK-wide uh, pay policy. In Scotland, we have taken action that hasn't been taken elsewhere in the UK to protect low pay workers, so we've given extra increases to low pay workers, unlike the situation elsewhere in the UK. We've also protected in the public sector what's called progression, where people move through the pay scales automatically. That hasn't always happened. Well, well, let me some this responsibility point. No, I do, well, and I'm coming on to that, but I think it's important to explain the differences. Uh, and the third difference is we've had a policy of no compulsory redundancies in uh, the NHS and the wider public service, which hasn't happened in England. So a newly qualified nurse in Scotland is paid more than his or her counterpart in the rest of the UK. So that's the context. Coming on to my responsibility as First Minister, which is to make sure that just as we've had that pay policy to try to protect jobs at a time of public spending cuts, we recognise the changing economic situation. So we're going into a period now where high inflation is becoming a fact of life. So I've said, I said it on that programme last weekend and we'll publish our manifesto on Tuesday, we'll have more to say on this. I think in a time of higher inflation, pay caps like that become increasingly unsustainable. So I think we will move into a period, certainly in Scotland, where we have to balance affordability with the real cost of living that our public sector workers are facing. A very fuller answer there. You didn't quite uh, answer what I uh, said directly, which is the food packages. Well, um, the Trussell Trust says mm -hmm. uh, it provided more than 145,000 packages to people in crisis absolutely. in Scotland last year. I mean, you, you know, I know that you want to yeah. say that this is a UK-wide issue, I, I, I but you do actually, have to take responsibility well, as well, don't you? You've I'm been in government Minister, for a long time. Look, I'm First Minister. I take responsibility for anything that happens in Scotland, and I, I, I recognise recognise that. But let me say, food, food uh, bank usage is, again, not something that's unique to Scotland. It is, we're seeing an increase in food bank uh, usage across the UK. If you speak to the Trussell Trust, if you speak to many people uh, working in this field, what they will tell you is that one of the key drivers, the most uh, significant driver of the increase in people going to food banks, are welfare changes. The cuts that we've seen to working age benefits, the, the benefit freeze that's in place, the SNP government, my government, spends £100 million a year right now mitigating Tory welfare changes. Nobody in Scotland, because of the action we are taking, is having to pay the bedroom tax, for example. So we're working really hard to protect this, but if we want to tackle this, we've got to tackle it at source. That's why we're publishing in our manifesto an alternative to Tory austerity. It's why we'll say in our manifesto that we think things like the benefits freeze can't go on. We've got the Resolution Foundation saying that we're going to see greater inequality over the next number of years uh, since the days of Margaret Thatcher. The incomes of the lowest paid in our society will decline. So we've got to tackle these problems at source, and the source is Tory austerity and the assault you on see, the police you, you rail against Conservative uh, austerity. You've got an article in a newspaper um, saying you've got 10 days to stop the cruel uh, Conservative uh, austerity. But actually, if you look at the SNP's record, funding for councils in Scotland is down 11% since uh, 2010. And you could raise taxes, couldn't you? You've decided not to necessarily do that. We, Why we, don't you? We, we've not raised the basic rate of income tax because, again, it goes back to this point about the pay cap. At a time of rising inflation, that's hitting low and middle income earners. But we have also taken the decision, unlike the Tories in the rest of the UK, not to give a tax rise to higher rate taxpayers. So we are making responsible decisions about tax. Uh, funding for local services uh, in this financial year as a result of the SNP budget is actually increasing uh, by uh, several hundred million pounds. We're putting 120 million pounds into the hands of head teachers to help tackle attainment in schools. So 
I take responsibility for all of the policies of my government, but we are doing what we can to mitigate Tory austerity. But the way to end Tory austerity is to do it at source. And if you, know, if you look at it's, it's interesting, if you look at the Labour UK manifesto, all of the policies that Jeremy Corbyn is putting forward, from scrapping tuition fees to scrapping hospital car parking charges uh, to climate change, these are all policies already implemented it's in Scotland. interesting you say Scotland that about the way in Jeremy Corbyn um, having some similar policies to you. Would you prefer to see him as UK Prime Minister over to see, May? Look, I want to see a strong voice for Scotland in the House of Commons. So my uh, job but the question is to, I ask you directly, uh, who would you prefer to see, Jeremy I, Corbyn or Theresa May? Because it's not going to be I don't want you, to is see, it, no matter how long you do. I don't want to see Tory governments and Tory Prime Ministers, they do real damage to Scotland. I think one of the things Labour's got to answer for in this election is that they've put forward um, a leader uh, that lacks credibility in terms of uh, people's perception of his ability to be Prime Minister. So all of that means if you want Scotland to have the strongest voice, then vote SNP to make sure uh, we get that. Tory MPs will be rubber stamps for what Theresa May uh, wants to do, whatever that is, from an extreme Brexit through to further austerity. And the risk in Scotland of voting Labour is that you let the Tories in instead. So if you want Scotland's interest to be protected and the strongest possible voice for Scotland, with the big challenges we face over the next few years, then the only way to get that in Scotland is to vote SNP.